What's going on everyone? Welcome back. Patrick here moving on to the next example. It's actually a continuation of the previous video. In the previous video we used the same table here to find answers for scenarios 1 and 2 and now notice we have scenarios 3 and 4. So if you didn't watch that previous video, I recommend you do because I go into a little bit more detail explaining this table here and then um, also going through the functions or the scenarios one and two, which I feel like are a little bit more simple than three and four. So number three, we got h of x equals f of f of x. This one's actually not bad. So notice that they're asking for h prime of six. So let's find an expression for h prime of x first. Notice we have a function f of x within another function f. Even though they're the same, it's still a composite function, so we would still use the chain rule. So we would take the derivative of the outside, which would be f prime, keep that inside the same, and then multiply by the derivative of the inside function, which is f prime x. And they're asking for h prime of 6, so uh, we would just plug in 6 for all the x values here. So we'd have f prime of f of 6 times f prime of 6, like that. So continuing this up here, we'll have f prime. What's f of 6 going to be? The value of f of x at an x value of 6 is going to be 7. And then what's f prime of 6 going to be? The value of f prime x at an x value of 6 is 4. So we're multiplying that by 4. And then what's f prime of 7? The value of f prime at an x value of 7 is 10. We're still multiplying that by 4. We end up getting 40. So that is the answer to this scenario here. That's the answer for h prime of 6. And then finally moving on to the fourth scenario. This one's going to be pretty long. There's going to be a lot going on here as a heads up. So if h of x equals 3 plus f of x to the power of 3 all over 4 minus g of x, we have to find h prime of 7. Okay, so notice here that we're working with a rational function. And so when we're finding the derivative h prime x, we're going to have to use the quotient rule. And then notice within the quotient rule, we're going to have to use the chain rule because this function in the numerator is a function 3 plus f of x within another function to the power of 3. So there's going to be lots going on here. Now, before finding the derivative, I'm actually going to take h of x and instead of writing f of x and g of x, like I've done before, I'm just going to write f and then g. You don't have to do this, but uh, I'm going to initially, just so I don't get confused with these uh, x's. So not confused, but just uh, I feel like it makes it a little more cleaner. Now, what you got to remember though, as I mentioned previously as well, is that whenever you get to the point where you have to find the derivative of f, because that's not the variable, the independent variable x that we're looking at, when you take the derivative of this, that's going to be f prime. Okay, same thing with this g here. Whenever you get to the point where you got to find the derivative of g, it's not going to be 1. It's just going to be g prime, like that. So that's all you got to keep in mind if you get rid of these x's here. Okay, so let's, uh, let's find the derivative here. So we're going to apply the quotient rule. The quotient rule, what we do is we find the derivative of the top, the numerator. So if I rewrite this, 3 plus f to the power of 3, what's the derivative of that going to be? We got to apply the chain rule. We got to bring the 3 down. The inside stays the same. Subtract 1 from the exponent. And then we got to take the derivative of the inside function, 3 plus f. Notice the derivative of 3 is just 0. And then the derivative of f would be f prime. So this would end up being f prime. Now I want to make a note that if it was 3f, if we were taking the derivative of 3f, then the derivative of that would be 3f prime, because that constant would stay attached 
to that f. But because it was 3 plus f, right, we take the derivative of that 3 separately, which is just 0. So I thought I would mention that. So this here is the derivative of the numerator. So let's rewrite all of that. We'll have 3 times 3 plus f to the power of 2 times f prime. But we have to take the derivative of the numerator, multiply it by the denominator, which would be 4 minus g, the function in the denominator left as is. And then what we got to do is we got to subtract the numerator function left as is, so we would rewrite that as 3 plus f to the power of 3 times the derivative of the denominator. What's the derivative of the denominator going to be? Well, derivative of 4 is just 0, and then we have like a negative 1g, so the derivative of that would be negative 1g prime. That constant st uh, stays attached. Right, so this here would be negative g prime. That's the derivative of the bottom function. And then what we got to do is we got to take the bottom function and square it. Like that. We don't take the derivative of the bottom function, we take it and then we just square it. So we just applied um, the quotient rule to all of this. And then when we took the derivative of the numerator here, we had to apply the chain rule. Right? So lots going on here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to bring back those x's now because now I feel like it's just easier to see and use this table and then this would be x here. And what are we finding? We're finding h prime of 7. So h prime of 7, we would plug in 7 for all of the x's here. So we'll have 3 times 3 plus f of 7, that's going to be squared. We'll have f prime of 7, then we'll have 4 minus g of 7, minus 3 plus f of 7, that's going to be to the power of 3, and then we'll have negative g prime of 7. And then this is going to be all over 4 minus g of 7, and that's going to be all squared. Okay, so. I just plugged in 7 for all of the x values. And then from here, let's, uh, let's actually continue it up here. What we do is we just plug in the values of f of 7, f prime of 7, g of 7, g prime of 7 from this table here. So we'll have 3, let's do this in steps, 3 plus f of 7 the value f of x at an x value 7 is negative 1. So 3 plus negative 1, that's like 3 minus 1. That's going to be to the power of 2. Let me split this up, just so we're not getting confused here. Uh, then we'll have f prime of 7. f prime of 7 at an x value 7, f prime x is 10. And then we'll have 4 minus g of 7. g of 7 is 6, so we'll have 4 minus 6 for that bracket there. And then we're going to be subtracting this bracket here, 3 plus f of 7. Remember, f of 7 is negative 1, so we'll have like 3 minus 1 to the power of 3. Then we'll have negative g prime of 7. g prime of 7 is 2, so we'll have a negative 2 here. This is going to be all over 4 minus g of 7. g of 7 is 6. And then we're going to be squaring it like that. So from here, we get to here by using that table. And now from here, it's just uh, plain algebra. So still lots of algebra to do, but uh, it's not bad. So what we'll have here is 3 times 3 minus 1 is 2 to the power of 2 is 4, 10, negative 2, minus 2 to the power of 3 is 8, times negative 2, all over 4 minus 6 is negative 2 to the power of 2 is 4. So 3 times 4 times 10 is 120 times negative 2 is negative 240. Negative 8 times negative 2 is positive 16 over 4. 
uh, we end up getting negative 240 plus 16 is negative 224 over 4. That would be what? Negative 56? So negative 56 ends up being the final answer for h prime of 7. Right, so this one was pretty complex because we had to do the chain, uh, we had to do the quotient rule, and then within the quotient rule, we had to do the chain rule and just remembering to derive f and g whenever we ran into them, making them f prime, g prime. Right, so these functions can get, uh, these questions can get pretty complex, and then being able to use that table pretty quickly. So yeah, just make sure you're getting practice with these types of complex chain rule questions.